Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, once again doing another movie review this week in a dedication to comic book legend Stan Lee, the founder of Marvel Comics, who gave us all of our superheroes, such as the Avengers, which includes Captain America, Iron Man, the Hulk, Nick Fury, Black Widow, Hawkeye, um, Four, Guardians of the Galaxy, and along with X Men, Deadpool, Daredevil, and a whole lot more. They will always be remembered. And he also had appeared in several cameos in all of the Marvel movies, no matter what. Because <laughs> whenever you see a Marvel film, you know you're going to have Stan Lee making a cameo. Because you know it's going to be good. Yeah. yeah. Sadly, he will be missed. Also, Steve Dico, the creator of Spider-Man. Yes, the web-swinging hero who is our friendly neighbor. <laughs> yeah. He will be missed as well. So anyway, for that particular dedication... I'm going to be reviewing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, a CGI animated film in this particular comic book style. It's a story about a teenager from Brooklyn who really admires Spider-Man, but not his uh, cop fodder, because he thought he was a menace. All of a sudden, he gets bitten by a radioactive spider and wants up becoming the next Spider-Man with the help of a group of Spider-People that's coming from a multi-universe. All set up by William Fisk, aka Kingpin, who's the villain in this film. Now, uh, for those who know, know who've seen this movie in theaters, because it is definitely the best Spider-Man movie to date, especially for 2018, because it's also nominated for an Oscar for Best Animated Feature recently. I mean, who knows if it's going to win or not. But it did one for the Annie Awards recently, so I'm happy for that. Um, as well as the Golden Globes. Um, but also to keep that in mind, for those who have seen this in theaters, yes, um, for those who have epileptic seizures, be aware because of all the flashy images and all of that involved in the film. Not to mention all that movement that has a bit of stop motion in there. Yeah. That's becoming a trend a lot lately, too. They happen with Incredibles 2 and all these other recent films. I guess that was the idea. Stars uh, Shamik Moore, Jake Johnson, Haley Steinfeld, Marshalla Ali, Brian Tyrese Henry, Lily Tomlin, Luna Lauren Balez, John Mahoney, Kamiko Glenn, Nicholas Cage, Catherine Hahn, and Lee Schreiber. It's written by Phil Lord, who usually collaborates with Christopher Miller with films like The Lego Movie and 21 Jump Street films. But this time, he co-writes with Rodney Rotman. But Phil Lord and Christopher Miller are the producers of the film, along with Amy Pascal, Ivy Arred, and Christina Steinberg <clears throat> and it's directed by three directors Bob Braschetti, Peter Ramsey and Rodney Rotman. The movie begins when we meet a teenager from Brooklyn who's a black Latino American named Miles Morales who admires our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, our web-swinging superhero who struggles living up to the expectations of his parents including his father, who's a police officer named Jefferson Davis, 
who actually sees Spider-Man as a menace. But after school, since he attended at the academy that uh, his father had attended him to, Miles secretly visits his uncle Aaron Davis, who brings Miles to an abandoned subway station where they had to create uh, graffiti art. And while he was there, he suddenly got unknowingly bitten by a radioactive spider, which then later on, he discovers that it gave him all the spider-like abilities, yeah, where he's beginning to hear all of his thoughts and started getting a spider sense in this comic book feel to it, yeah, because you see, you know, all the words that's happening. He also, of course, uh, meets a student, which he met earlier, named Wen, which unfortunately he accidentally uh, sticks uh, his hand to her hair, yeah, because it, it just wouldn't let go. So then Gwen took him to the nurse just to get it out. So they had to shave it off, and you know, it actually messes up her hair. <laughs> Even worse, uh, he was being chased around by a principal. He went straight into the principal office and suddenly escapes. And of course, you even hear like a Sparta Man Christmas song. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Uh, but then he escapes and he was sticking the, his hands uh, through the building, you know, trying to go to, to his entire uh, dorm room to enter inside. And plus, he was reading a comic book to see what's going on. And this is where he begins to experience it. So, he even becomes invisible, too, and, and emulates electric bend and blast, too. But searching for the spider, Miles returns to the station and unintentionally discovers a particle accelerator that was built by William Fisk, a.k.a. Kingpin, which is known as the Collider, which acts as Perel Universe to find an alternate version of his wife and son, both of which were killed during a car crash, just as they spotted uh, him um, attacking Spider-Man. Spider-Man, however, was about to disable it while fighting Fisk Enforcers, the Green Goblin, and the Plowler. Of course, we all know that Spider-Man's uh, real identity is Peter Parker. Um, but he was gravely wounded by an explosion during the battle which killed uh, Green Goblin. And then suddenly he spotted Miles and gives uh, a USB drive to him to disable the accelerator. And warns that the machine could destroy the entire city if it's turned on again. But then Fist suddenly kills uh, Spider-Man as Miles just spotted it. And that's where we get to see the news that Spider-Man was dead. Spread around across New York City. Yeah, and that's when they had a funeral that's set up with uh, Mary Jane Watson appearing. Yeah, who was his, of course, his love interest and his wife, which we learned that uh, they were separated. So afterwards, uh, Miles purchases Spider-Man costume, tries it out to, to use his newfound abilities, but he accidentally broke the USB drive. So once uh, he visits Spider-Man's grave, Miles all of a sudden meets, uh, from another universe, Peter B. Parker, who is basically a worn-out version of Spider-Man. But he was divorced by Mary Jane, and, and then we found out that Aunt May was deceased. So Peter reluctantly agrees to train Miles in exchange to help him steal the data from William Fisk's research facility. As they confronted by Fisk's chief uh, scientist, who's a woman named Octavia Octavis, who of course... Doc Ock. So that way they can create a new drive so they'll be able to um, be able to get all the information enough to stop the, the collider. 
So they're being attacked by Doc Ock until they're being saved by Gwen Stacy, which Miles had met previously at the Academy. Um, but she's actually from another dimension. So then Gwen, Peter, and Miles have found Peter's Aunt May, who, who's alive, but sheltered a dimension displaced uh, heroes, which includes Spider-Man Noir, sort of like a, <laughs> a, uh, a detective from the 30s and 40s, Spider-Ham, a, por a Porky Pig uh, type of character, <laughs> and Penny Parker, a Japanese anime uh, girl, but also creates a spider robot, so she'll be able to control it. But they also uh, deteriorate, and for those who don't know, of course, they, they started glitching around because of they're from the, the dimension. So, Miles had offered to disable the, uh, the collider, but was overwhelmed to judge by in his inexperience by being able to control his powers. With the help of Aunt May, um, he had to uh, use one of the Spider-Man costumes and create his own to be able to control his powers. You know, be able to think exactly like what Spider-Man would do. So that way he'll be able to work with the spider people to stop Kingpin along with Doc Ock to use the collider before it winds up destroying the entire city including all the people involved. So that's how the film uh, really goes and it's well done. I mean for its animation that they created it gives it a, a comic book feel to it as it seems. The animation, of course, was done by Sony Pictures Image Works, you know, who had work on all the other films from Sony. But it's great to see that they teamed up with Marvel to, uh, came up with this particular story that they've been working on for a while. And with Phil Lord and Christopher Miller did the Lego Movie movies and the 21 Jump Street films, too. So they thought, you know, with the help of these guys, you know, they can actually create everything. Um, had a lot of fun that they went for, like they, they poked fun at of all these other pop culture references to all the previous Spider-Mans, as we all know. But also can throw in some pop culture references of, of Japanese uh, anime and, and, and a bit of uh, Looney Tunes in there. So I, I really love that. Um, but it was really cool, you know. They, I, I find it pretty interesting that they went for diversity this time. Because, I mean, the fact that you get a uh, a black Latino teenager, because he also um, has uh, a mother who's um, who is uh, Latino, and then um, he even has an, an uncle. It's basically does what he does, you know, just doing all these graffiti art and everything. While well, he has a father who's an officer, just couldn't stand Spider-Man, but hey, in the end, he'll be able to learn. Um, but I had to say, it was really fun. I mean, having to see uh, all different Spider-Mans, or Spider-People from a different universe, and they're helping uh, Miles out, be able to learn all the moves and all the powers and to control and everything. And yes, it has a mix of all the other music that you hear, you know, some rap songs and and all this random stuff, but you get the idea. Um, they even show um, all the, um, you know, how they all began too, like they always show how Spider-Man began or or how they begin all in comic book form and they tell their story all together. <laughs> that was pretty clever. Um, but it did have impressive voice acting, all which uh, are done by very talented actors like, of course, Shamik Moore, Jake Johnson, uh, even Lily Tomlin, too. 
with uh, Nicolas Cage. I mean, geez, it's like, now you know you can recognize some of the voice acting that you hear. And Hailey Steinfeld, too. I mean, they were all very good. And they, did, they did a very good job portraying it. <clears throat> I know they're going to uh, work on a sequel uh, pretty soon. Hopefully they will see what they can do. It's already becoming a huge hit at the box office. Um, earning... 35 9.1 million out of its 90 million budget that this movie went for. And it does pay a tribute to Spider Man, but it really had a lot of fun for the characters. Uh, not a bad scene whatsoever. That's, that's a good thing. I highly recommend this movie. So, anyway, that's Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.